Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I've had a lot of caffeine today. It's Saturday morning, and I feel like making something. Last week, we made a big meat cleaver. Today, we're going to make something a little bit on the smaller side. We're going to be making a straight razor. Let's get started. So the main impetus behind this video is I went down to Boston recently, and I went to a specialty shaving shop. I don't know. Insert bald guy joke here. And they were selling some really cool razors, but they were expensive. They were like 300 bucks, 400 bucks, and I don't really have that kind of money right now, so... I wanted to see if I could make something somewhere in the ballpark for about 10 bucks. The first step for me in any knife build is always cutting out the rough shape of the knife using a cutting wheel on my angle grinder. For steel, we're going to be going with 1095. It's my favorite steel for knife making, it's not nearly as hard to harden as people make it out to be, and it holds an edge forever if you temper it right. 1095 is also pretty cheap. I bought a 12 inch by 12 inch piece off Amazon for about 50 bucks and I've gotten 6 knives or so out of it so far. If you want to get some yourself, I always leave links to everything I use in the description below. With everything rough shaped, it was time to drill a hole for the blade to hinge on. So when you're drilling metal, I know I've said this before, but seriously, start with a small bit and move up to a bigger bit. It took me a long time to learn that and a lot of broken bits. It also helps if you remember to anneal or soften the steel beforehand. Just saying. It's cold in my workshop. Once I've got the blade rough shaped using the cutting wheel, I run over to the 40 grit sanding wheel on my angle grinder. This is my favorite way to get fine lines. Another little side note, I was always taught that you can tell the relative carbon content of the steel by looking at the sparks. If they flower at the end, like you're seeing here, that means that the steel will likely be able to harden. I always use digital calipers to find the center line on my knife and to measure out for my bevels. If you want to scrap lines but you don't have any blue dicum, Sharpie works pretty well in this case. So I ordered a pretty legitimate blacksmith and forge off Amazon recently, but it hadn't arrived yet when I filmed this video, so I had to improvise a little bit.
my knife heating up, I had a little time to kill. I decided to use it productively and harass my dog. I think where most people have trouble with 1095 is that they don't quench it fast enough. You have to quench 1095 very fast to get a good heart. I tend to quench in water, and I know that can be risky, but I usually get really good results from it. When you're making a straight razor, you have to make some sort of partial stop or middle piece inside. I went with some figure maple I have to scrap because I'm fancy and I have figure maple to scrap and I love my life. For the majority of the handle, I decided to go with this figure babinga. Just utterly gorgeous stuff. As you can see, I'm making a guitar out of it, but that's maybe another video for another time. This is a great trick. If you use nails for pins, cut the end off the nail and use it as your drill bit. You will get exact holes to the size of your pin. Doing a test fit before the final glue up, I saw that the blade was catching just a little bit on my middle piece. So I took off some material towards the end and it goes right in. You guys know me, I like my exotic hardwoods. I can tell you one thing, Babinga is hard stuff. This is just like blackwood. Anything I did burned it. So despite my terrible record of torch tempering on YouTube videos, I decided to try again with map gas torch. And I just went slow, slow, slow. 
Somehow, someway, I actually did it this time. I got a straw across almost the whole blade. Really happy with that temper. I hand sand all my knives to about 800 grit. I just like that kind of satin, shiny, matte look. Almost mirror polish, but not quite. So with the razor done, I wanted to see if I could get some hair off my face. I haphazardly sharpened it on Arkansas stone and tested it on my forearm and decided it was good enough to try it out. So I haven't done a clean shave in like three years, so as it turned out, shaving with a straight razor was actually kind of hard. Upon realizing this was a skill I was going to need to practice, I will admit some frustration came out. Like and subscribe to the channel, I post metalworking content, I post woodworking content, and I love hearing from you guys. We just hit 500 subscribers and that is so cool, that's seriously so awesome. You guys are great. It's really cool to read your comments every day and just, it's awesome to have a fan base like you guys. If you have any recommendations for what you want to see me build next, I'd love to hear it. I had a lot of fun building this straight razor, but I'm always up for new things and I want to expand my horizons. I want to challenge myself, so let me know guys. Until next time, I hope you get out of the workshop and I hope you make something awesome. A. Schmidt, signing out.